Video? Das wirkt immer. So, wo stelle ich mich hin jetzt? Ja, liebe Gäste, wir warten eigentlich noch auf vier bis fünf Personen, die sich angemeldet haben, aber das schöne Wetter vermutlich äh, führt dazu, dass der eine oder andere dann doch lieber am See geblieben ist, statt äh, sich hier der geistigen Genüsse zu widmen. Ähm, schön, dass ihr alle da seid. Bevor wir jetzt hier in den offiziellen Teil einsteigen, ähm, erstmal vielen Dank an den lieben Martin Baulmann, der heute Abend mit einigen seiner südafrikanischen Spezialitäten vorbeigekommen ist. Der nächste Punkt und eigentlich der, sagen wir mal, Hauptgast des Abends, wo ist er jetzt? Richard, schön, dass du da bist. Richard ist oft in der Nähe. Ja, er wagt sich nur sehr selten in die Öffentlichkeit. Er zieht lieber im Hintergrund die Strippen. Nein, es ist heute Abend äh, quasi ein erster, äh, wie soll ich sagen, Testrun hier für uns einfach mal. Wir haben gesagt, so ein bisschen Friends, Family und ein paar interessierte äh, Gäste. Wer mag sich das Ganze mal anschauen und Richards Pop-Up-Show ähm, hier persönlich miterleben. Er zeigt uns ein bisschen, wie er arbeitet, was er macht, was so seine neuesten Ideen sind. You can play if you want, no problem. It's cool. You've seen, you've seen the thing. Okay, who hasn't seen the, the tour? What I'm going to show you now is what I do in Cape Town in South Africa. Darius has seen it. You're going to maybe explain a little bit further. But it's a little bit uh, watered. Visakman uh, in Deutsch. Uh, smaller. Kleiner. Okay, so I was, uh, I'm a tick the box of kind of guy. So I decided uh, uh, to start. I started a company in, 2000, in 1994 and I sold it in 2002. I wanted to retire by the age of 35, and I managed to do it by the age of 33. And I, uh, I decided. Uh, to, my wife said, "What are you going to do with the money?" And I said, uh, "I don't know. I'm just going to. We're just going to chill and go on holidays and go on cruises." She said, "No, you're not. You're going to reinvest it into another career." So I decided to go into my art, an art career. I was speaking a lot with uh, John Hogatai from Hart Bay Gallery in Cape Town. And John showed, that the secret to art is John showed me uh, three paintings. He showed me a Picasso, he showed me an Andy Warhol, and he showed me a Vincent van Gogh. And he said, who are these? I said, uh, Picasso, van Gogh, and Andy Warhol. He said, how do you know that? He I said, because you can see it. It's a Vincent van Gogh. So, I, did, I didn't, he said, you don't realize it. It's not the signature. People will walk into the room and say, that's a van Gogh. That's a Picasso. Ah, that's a Richard Scott. Why? So I decided to make all the subjects of my art white. It's a white cat, a white girl, a white tree. And then the color is on the outside with a thick black line in the middle. So that is very identifiable and that is the signature. The signature is not uh, Richard Scott signing the painting. Number one. Number two, he said to me, go make a better product. So I found a, um, I found a carpenter in South Africa who made me a better product. They, they used to use thin canvases. No, I found a better carpenter, made a better canvas with a stretch, etc., etc., and we created a much better product. And then I also went, uh, I used to use uh, um, Winsor Newton tubes of paint, and it was just too expensive. I, used, I would sell a painting like that, that, uh, not that size, that size, in 2002 would cost about 100 euros, 150 euros. Today that's uh, 32,000 euros. So now I can use Winsor Newton, but in those days I couldn't win use Winsor Newton, it was too expensive. So I was using cheap paint. So the first 40, 50 paintings that I ever did was really cheap paint. And I thought, no, okay, let me go and find an, uh, a chemist. And I made my own paint. And what we did was we, uh, we created, sorry, in South Africa in the studio, there's lots of big buckets of paint. But here we have uh, what we call a white base. This is flown all the way in from South Africa via London. And we take, this, we take this paint, we put it in a bucket. And we put about that much in, and then we put so much pigment in. The reason why paint is expensive is this costs about uh, euros, uh, 200 euros. This costs about 200 euros, this bottle. A big tub of this paint costs 200 euros. Yeah. So you can put a tiny little bit of this in here and it will turn red. And back after three or four years, it will start to become uh, not good paint. So we make, the secret to paint is to put a high pigment load in. And the Winsor Newton paints all have a very high pigment load, lots and lots of pigment. And so when you put lots of pigments in, you end up with a very good, high quality, sorry, been on an aeroplane. You end up with a very, very good, high quality paint. 
And that's the secret. You get your own signature and also use high quality stuff. That's the way I learned. I retired and I decided to go into art and I put a lot of money into it and I advertised and I decided I'm going to make uh, the best quality. Always only have the best quality. Every, Picasso wrote the books on art. He wrote about um, people need to steal your art, copy your art and uh, you need to appear in the secondary market and then you have, uh, the, then you found the success in art. But people also like texture, color, and those kind of things. So I early on learned that texture was important. So this is why I found this paint and I put it on like this. This is how I create the texture that you see on the paint. And you can see the tree behind you, etc. Sorry, Pete, I went mess on the floor. Okay. And an artist has certain uh, periods in his career. So it went from 2002 to 2005. Uh, I used to paint. Uh, I, had a, I was painting a lot. Uh, you guys met me in 2011. So, so 2002, 2005, if I was painting, I would do like this in the paste. And this is where you see the cat, for example, up there. This here is where the black line will appear afterwards. And that's what gives you the texture. So your eye sees the texture. If you look at a flat image like this, it looks quite flat. But if you look at the tree behind you, it's got texture to it. And that's more attractive than the flat image. Um, and then I used to sign, I never signed my paintings with a, with a pen. I developed a method to sign them like with this block here. Where's the new block? Uh, 2018 block. Uh, ah, there we go. So I developed this block to sign this, the, the paintings like this, Richard. Um, and I have a different block for every year. That's 2011, that's 2015. I brought some of these with me from South Africa. It's 20, 2007. And I, just, I basically take it like this with a bit of water. Hey, Vanda. Okay. Put some water here like that. There we go. Signed. And the reason I developed this is because in 2005, I couldn't paint enough. I was, paint, I was selling 40 paintings a month. And then the, I had a major production line from 2002 to 2011. So in, from 2002 to 2005, I used to do a lot of this work with the Black Lives Act. From 2005 to 2011, there was no time for that. I didn't do any of the stuff. All the assistants did it. I only painted on the next day. So you never saw that line in like that. So, um, what happened in 2011, um, just to explain to you quickly, this guy here, uh, we've all met him, he should be here tonight, but he's not. Vincent Van Zon. Vincent Van Zon. <laughs> I met Vincent Van Zon in um, 2003, one year into my career, and Vincent, uh, uh, there was a crazy gallery guy in Hamanas in South Africa, said there's a, there's a, a guy in here who wants you to sign the back of all his paintings. He just bought seven paintings. So I went to Hermanus and I met Vincent and I signed the back of his paintings and he invited me to Rotterdam. I went to Rotterdam and on his wall was Andy Warhol, a Keith Haring and a Richard Scott, one of my paintings. Vincent, cool. And um, to this day, Vincent and I speak every day. We're business partners, etc., etc. So from the very, very beginning, Vincent helped me. In 2011, I was mass producing so much art. The galleries are coming from Italy. There were seven galleries. And uh, from now on, you, you, know, you no longer paint red trees, you don't paint that, those candy girls, you don't paint any of this stuff anymore, and that's finished. You now work on projects. 50 red trees, so you can say to me, well, you've done 50 red trees, but uh, Andy Worrell did 50, 52 red soup, red soup cans, and each soup can is worth $1 million, each painting. So I can also paint as many red trees as I want. But, so this project was more about painting one painting one photograph, one painting, one photograph, one painting. And then we also took it to the next level where we painted uh, some Vespers. And we had a lot of fun with Vespers like this as well. Really cool Vespers. So this is what they call a body of work. So you get two types of artists in the world. You get an academic artist and you get a commercial artist. An academic artist is a, an artist that goes to university, gets a degree, and then he gets taken up by a gallery. But the gallery will decide on his future. The gallery will say, mm, no, yes, we like you, and we'll make you famous. 
So whether you, you, you create rubbish or good stuff, the gallery will make you famous. I said, I'm not interested. I'm, I'm a businessman. I'm going to make myself famous. So that's the strategy that I'm following, more of a commercial route. It's a little bit more difficult, but it's a long-term approach. So the second product I worked on was um, with Desmond Tutu. I don't know if you guys know Desmond Tutu. Sure. Yeah. We worked on a series of uh, with the with the foundation uh, himself and with the foundation. Um, we did a whole series of uh, paintings. I'll show you here quickly. Sort of these, this sort of thing. Uh, there with Cape Town. But it's a little bit difficult to explain here on, with a lot of people. And then with when he voted in 1994. Uh, so the idea here was that it was part of that was his daughter in my studio. So we had a whole project plan. Again, what I was trying to say about bodies of work, it's when, you, when an artist takes, uh, goes to the next level with bodies, you have to have a business plan, you have to have a strategy, a marketing strategy, who you're going to sell it to. It's not like, uh, please can you sell my painting in a little gallery. So that's what these projects are like. And this is a, a 40 million euro project. Um, with the foundation, with his daughter, the archbishop himself was in the studio, um, stamping every single painting. So that's also, I get goosebumps when I talk about that. And then there's also other, other projects I worked with, the supercar, the Ferrari, Lamborghini, Aston Martin, um, and that kind of stuff. So that's where I've been moving on from 2011. In 2011, um, there was really cool guys in Frankfurt, Butzbach in particular, called Andreas and Pete, <laughs> that invested in my art and they bought they made a huge mistake. They only bought about 20 pieces, 28 pieces. There was a guy in, in, in Leuven, Belgium, who bought about uh, 200 pieces. There was a guy in South Africa who bought about 200 pieces. And now those pieces that they bought all those years ago for 500 euros, 1,000 euros, 10,000 euros, are now worth 500,000, uh, sorry, 80,000 euros. And my goal is to make it worth a million euros one day. And, and it's very possible. There is currently about 150 artists in the world, globally, that sell paintings for 1 million euros, living artists, today, 150 people that can sell art. If they can do it, why can't I? Okay, so for me, art is about business, left brain and right brain. It's about having a strategy and about it being creative. You can be a little chirp, paint little paint stuff and go to a gallery and beg them to sell it, but they won't. You have to have a strategy. And if you wake up every day with a strategy, you, you, can, you can get a little bit one step at a time. I come to Europe every month for two weeks, 10 days to two weeks. And my strategy now is to tell people that those pieces are no longer available. You can now buy prints. And I have prints galleries in, Mun in, in uh, Munster, Dortmund, all over Germany, all over Italy, all over um, uh, in New York, etc. And they now want access to original paintings. They can't help you. If you want original paintings, speak to Andreas. He, he was the clever guy who bought in the past. Uh, and and now if you want something original, I can work on a project. I'm working on this project with Desmond Tutu, but unfortunately those paintings are going to be a million euros with, when we launch the project. So you have to have a strategy. Uh, when you leave university in South Africa, I don't know about Germany, but they don't teach you about making money as an artist. They don't teach you how to make money. They don't teach you strategy marketing. Um, and then they are controlled by the galleries. So that for me is the, the solution. So. That's it. No, no.